everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and Ramadan Mubarak. So we are doing the opening of day 7 through 12. Now, I am so sorry I'm not doing daily uploads or daily photos. Um, if you are following Ramadan Wool Club, then they're pretty much going to spoil my videos for you. But <laughs> nonetheless, I thought this would still be fun to do because there might be people who might access this video after Ramadan who maybe have no idea about it. Um, you know, people who maybe follow this channel but don't follow the Instagram accounts of the... Um, of the yarn dyers or the ramadan wool club instagram so anyways so in these videos if you are only tuning into this one and you didn't tune into my first day one through six this is a yarn opening of the ramadan wool club the ramadan wool club is a group of i believe it's five right one two three four five i don't know i always have to question myself with that five Muslim women indie dyers um, that specialize in hand dyeing wool. Um, some of the dyers work with superwash, some with non superwash, some with local yarn, um, some do very colorful work, some use more natural dyes. So it's all going to be a really cool variety and it allows you to kind of get a taste for each dyer's style or aesthetic as well as what they offer. Last week, we did Abuelita Fiber Company, who was Fatima, and she specializes in doing natural dyes with locally sourced uh, wool, and her collection that she did with the mini skeins for the Ramadan Wool Club was inspired by the sunset. It was absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to dive into them. I kind of already have an idea that I might do something for my daughter, but to do that, I need to buy an actual, like, full hank so that I have like a main color and then I'm going to use her mini skeins as like striped colors throughout the garment. So anyways, that's just an idea. It's not 100%, but it's kind of what I have floating on in my mind. <laughs> so I was on vacation this past week. Alhamdulillah, I was visiting my father-in-law for the first week of Ramadan. It was really nice. I kind of got to lounge back and relax a little bit. Um, so I am now back and we are now jumping into this. Now, unfortunately for me, because I am kind of opening these up all at once, I'm not doing it daily just so that I can do it for the video for you guys. I have been getting some spoilers from the Ramadan Wool Club Instagram. So I kind of have an idea of like what the first, I think we're on seven, eight, nine. I think we're on the ninth day today as I'm opening this. So I have kind of seen like the first three yarns, but honestly, I can't say I remember entirely except for today's yarn. And that reminded me, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this yarn opening before I see too many more of these spoilers because then it's just going to ruin it for me. And of course, I don't upload these videos until either day 12 or day 13. Um, for the last one, I think it because it was one through six, I think I did upload it on day seven, maybe. So I'm not spoiling this for you. These are yarns that if you are a part of the Ramadan Wool Club or you're just kind of looking into it, um, they'll have already opened up the yarn. So that's what I'm saying. They might actually be spoiling my video. <laughs> How dare you guys? So anyways, but um, this is just for fun for you guys uh, to show you guys all of these beautiful companies um, and different styles of wool and things like that. So today, day 7 through 12 is going to be Aquarius Make. So on here, this is Meet the Makers. Aquarius make. Okay, her name is Fatima as well. Mashallah. Uh, meet Fatima, the dyer behind Aquarius make. She is based in Michigan, USA. Uh, she gets inspiration from nature and everything around her. She enjoys dyeing on superwash wool. Her colors change depending on her mood, ranging from neons to neutrals. It it really depends. Oh, hold on. Did I lose space? It really brings her joy to see people create beautiful handmade items from her yarn. You can find her on Instagram with um, hashtag or at Aquarius underscore make and tag her yarn with hashtag Aquarius makes fibers 
Hashtag Aquarius makes fibers. Did that get written twice? Aquarius make fibers. Aquarius make fibers. Okay, that got just written twice on accident. That's okay. <laughs> so anyways, so that's what we're going to be opening today. And then afterwards, we will sit down, have just like a little Islamic chat. I know we didn't really do that in the last video, days one through six. And that's because I kind of did that in my podcast. There won't be another um, updated projects podcast until after Eid, inshallah, God willing. Um, but I am going to sit down after I open up the yarn for you guys and do just like a little Islamic discussion. So if you're interested in that, then please stay tuned. If you're not, you know, then feel free to exit after you see all of the beautiful yarn. So let's go ahead and get started. There's This is noisy, okay? This is just, it's, it's noisy. There's nothing you can do about it. So let's just dump everything out ah! <laughs> okay so here we have salam my theme for this week or for the next six days is based on random things that are a part of my personal beliefs so we have day seven is sujood uh day eight is asra um, day 9, Nijat, uh, day 10, Hijab, day 11, Abaya, day 12, Hanna. Now, as we open these, I'll go ahead and I'll read these. So then it says, hope you love all of the minis as much as I enjoy dyeing them for you, Fatima. And one thing that I love, if you are getting this package, they all smell like, what is it, Bukur or incense or some type of like, I don't know. It's kind of musky. I don't know. It just smells very lovely. I feel like I'm like getting stuff from like an Arabic shop, <laughs> like a sook or something. So anyways, okay, so let's get started. What do we have here? Okay, so we have seven, eight, we've got nine, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear these away and get started with day seven. All right, so day seven. Day seven is sujood. This means prostration, which is performed in our daily obligatory prayers. So just a little side note in case maybe you're not Muslim and you're tuning into this. As a Muslim, we are commanded to pray five times a day. Now, these are the um, the mandatory prayers. We do have extra prayers, uh, but these are the mandatory one, and we have five of them. When we do pray, I'm sure most people are kind of familiar with the fact that, um, and my two-year-old is in here, so. <laughs> Bubba, okay, you're going to stand there and be good, right? Okay. So I'm sure you guys may be on the news or TV or whatever have seen a Muslim pray, roughly. So there is a position in which is called sujood as we're bending down in our prostration. So that is what she is referring to. And my two-year-old keeps touching the camera stand. Please don't do that. All right, so let's go ahead and open up day seven. And please forgive my dry hands, my long nails. I have not cut them this week. I will be, <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> so anyways, I've been away. I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> so anywho, okay, day seven. You want to open it? Okay, here, let's see what's inside. Okay, but you're shaking the camera. Yoo-hoo! Okay, so this is the yarn here. Yes, Baba. Let's see, what is that? Okay, can twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> All right, so we have a stitch marker here that has a moon and a star on it. Mashallah, I like that. So now this is the first colorway. It's kind of this um, muted, plummy color. It's very soft, very nice. So here, this is a size one super fine yarn. It's 75% super wash merino and 25% nylon. It's a three ply and it's got approximately 92 yards in it. So that is our first day, but technically it's day seven, okay? Okay, before we open this, let's go ahead and read what she has on her card. Asra. Ramadan lasts for 29 to 30 days, which is divided into three asra. Asra literally means 10 days in Arabic. All right. 
No, 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 what? Oh, Ashara! <laughs> I know from trying to teach my kids the, um, what is it? The numbers. Go ahead, it's then. All right, you opening it? Whoa! That's pretty. That's very girly. I could see myself again wanting to do something with this for my daughter, possibly. It's got some pink in here with white and then it kind of fades and blends into this really pretty lavender color again just super soft i'm assuming she's using the same base for all of these that's how it was for the abuelita fiber company she used the same base for all of them i guess the thought is like if you wanted to make something obviously you'd want the same fiber content so that is the second one which is day eight okay let's see day so here we have day nine. So day nine is Nijat. Nijat, meaning salvation, is the last 10 days of Ramadan and considered to be the most significant of the month essential in our journey of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have here day nine. And I think this is the one that I saw today. Okay, it is. It is the one that I saw today. Mashallah, I love this. I've seen um, these types of yarn before that has kind of this like, not tweed. I don't know what to call it, but I just think it looks really cool. So it's it looks like it's got some pink in here, um, kind of like some periwinkle blue. And then we've got that mixed kind of black and white in there and then some cream. It goes, so that's very pretty. Okay, so that is our third little mini hank or mini skein from Aquarius Make. Now what are we on? Day 10. Okay, so day 10 is hijab. Hijab or headscarf is worn by Muslim women to maintain modesty and privacy from unrelated males. I picked this name since this is my 20th year wearing hijab and the colors are based on the hijabs I own. Masha'Allah, may Allah continue to bless you, Fatima, in your hijab journey. I myself am a hijabi of, I think, nine years. I started wearing hijab about a year after I converted. Um, and then a few years later, I actually started to wear the niqab, alhamdulillah. And so now for all of my non-Muslim viewers or non-Arabic speaking viewers, a lot of people do get very confused with this word hijab. And I just think that it's very important to kind of shed a little bit of light, you know, when the opportunity of presenting knowledge is there. The word hijab, as reference to the headscarf, a lot of people point out is not mentioned in the Quran. So now hijab in the Quran is actually a separation. It's a divider. It's something that keeps one person from the other. It's a covering, a veil, but it's not strictly referred to a head covering in the Quran. This is going to be something that's more commonly known as like the Jalbab for short. Uh, I think it's in the Quran. I don't speak Arabic, so I'm trying to remember correctly the exact words. Jubahina, uh, jal Jalbabhina, Jalbihina. Anyways, maybe I'll put type it here just in case. Um, so, but the hijab as kind of more of a general, uh, I would say kind of more of a modern linguistic form of referring to the headscarf is what she is meaning here. When you say, do you wear hijab? You're going to be discussing the headscarf on a woman's head. Um, but yes, traditionally in, in the Quran, hijab is not referred to specifically as the headscarf that is on the head. So I did just want to point that out because there are some times where people are like, oh, hijab isn't mentioned in the Quran. What well, is actually just not particularly as a head covering. So anyways, so again, just had to throw that little tidbit out there. So anyways, day 10. And now I don't think anybody on Instagram has opened up day 10 yet. So I haven't seen this one. 
I'm trying not to look at it until I like pull it out and I'm feeling some other goodies in here. Okay, now I'm looking at it. Okay, mashallah. All right, so here, oh, an earring kit. Oh, you know what? I might have actually seen day 10. I remember seeing an earring kit. Okay, yes, all right. You know what? I might have closed my eyes when I was flipping through. Okay, so here are some little earrings. Um, and then we have some thread here. The kit contains 30 yards of cotton thread, um, some fish hook earrings, um, and then the pattern is provided. The pattern will be provided. Okay, so it'll be really interesting to see what this is. Maybe it's like a knotted or crocheted. Um, I do think Aquarius makes crochets i see her crochet quite a bit so maybe they're crocheted earrings oh that would be super cool okay i'm excited to look at that and mashallah this is very pretty it almost kind of seems like a deeper darker just version of this so you have of course you have the the blue or the much darker purple whereas here it's more of a lavender but you do have some lighter purples here you do have kind of what would this be concerned it's still kind of a plummy you can see a little bit of like a lighter pink but that might just actually be the purple just kind of fading onto the neutral base but mashallah this is very pretty okay so now we are on day 11 i'm just gonna kind of squeeze this in here all right i had to go get my daughter so i'm holding her so i'm wondering how i'm going to go about doing this Hmm? How, how am I going to be able to hold you hmm? and open this with one hand? Let's see. All right. We have day 11 and oh my gosh, <laughs> my two-year-old got into some little fragrances that I don't use them as perfume. I was kind of keeping them around to make some candles with. Woo, and he kind of got, <laughs> got into them while I was going to get my daughter. Oh my gosh. Okay. Day 11. Abaya. Abaya is a loose overgarment. What? Wow! Abaya is a loose overgarment, robe-like dress worn by some, I'm going to say Muslim women. Um, I started wearing mine in high school, and it's become a part of my identity. It was my choice, but I try to remember my intention behind wearing it and try to improve and learn more about it. Masha'Allah, again, may Allah continue to guide you in your modesty. If you are interested to see kind of what an abaya is, I do have a YouTube video here where I'm actually showing some of my own handmade abayas. So you can kind of see what it's, uh, it would be robe-like if it was like an open abaya, which I do show one open abayas, um, one open abaya on that video, but the rest are closed. So it's really more so just like a big kind of boxy oversized dress in, in that way. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead, get into day 11. All right, you're gonna help me? Can you open it for me? Since I only have one hand. Oh, Bubba, you are so perfumey. Come on, I'm waiting. Woohoo, look at that. Oh, it's like black and purple yeah, and kind of gray, uh, but I'm not sure she's using gray. It's probably just the black on the neutral yeah, base again, kind right of mixing there. in with that purple. So I think that this probably is just predominantly just pink and black. Very nice, hey. huh? Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're going to do day 12. All right, day 12 is henna. Lastly, henna is part of my traditional celebration on Eid Day. Without fail, I apply an elaborate henna design on my left hand and a plain design on my right hand. It's difficult to use your non-dominant hand to apply henna. Yes, it is. I always only do henna on my left hand. I won't even bother trying to do henna on my right hand. <laughs> so anyways... All right, so let's go ahead and open it. I think most people know what henna is. Yes, up. Come on. All right, what's in there? Whoa, oh, there's something that came out of the bag. Ooh, I like that. So that's a beautiful kind of foresty green. 
And this is more of a tweed. You can see these little specks here. So this is like a tweed. Let me see. What is it? Oh, it's candy. Here, let me show. Here, let me show. What is it? Is it a, oh, cappuccino candy. No, but wait. here, I'll give it to you in a little bit, okay? Okay, because I want to take a picture. All right, so this concludes the Aquarius make. This is day 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. MashaAllah, I love them. I wouldn't say I will be able to use these together, um, but I definitely think they're great. Maybe. Here, what? What did you just, did you put the candy in there? But I do think that they'll be great. I might actually be able to like mix like these together and maybe these together. Um, well, you know, this might, if, if this was like in between them, like I could see something like this going on, maybe. Maybe because it has the black in there, like maybe. I'm thinking this might need to find its own project though. But I could see these three together and these two together. So we shall see what I end up doing with this. I know that the kits that they've kind of included, um, I think they included a, they're calling it a vicar shawl. Um, and there was a sister last year who pretty much used all of the minis and made the vicar shawl. Um, I've really been wanting to get into making some shawls lately, um, but I'm not entirely sure I want to use them all in just like one project. So we'll see. I think they might have a couple other patterns or things of that sort that kind of come with the purchase of this. So anyways, mashallah, I absolutely love the yarn. I'm really happy with it. Um, I love doing this opening. I'm excited to go ahead and do the next designer. So let's go ahead and get into our little Islamic topic, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Ramadan Mubarak. Okay, so we are at our Islamic portion of the video. So I will be honest, I have not really been reading the books that I informed you guys that I would be reading. Um, I have mainly been reading Quran. Um, I don't know if that's kind of like intentional. I'm kind of doing it subconsciously. Um, because I do kind of feel like the Qur'an is the most important and I really haven't had like the reading bug. I really thought that I was going to be able to like motivate myself and start reading again um, this Ramadan. But honestly, I just like have not been motivated to read. And then, of course, I took up a test knit um, that has to be done by April 30th. So I am kind of feeling like when I have spare time, I'm doing that, which I stuck for a law like I really shouldn't be. Alhamdulillah, I'm not spending that much time on it. Like I literally just started it. So, um, you know, but yeah, so I've mainly been reading the Quran. Now, I am nobody, obviously, to be giving like tafsir of the Quran and things like that. But since I know that I may have some followers who are not Muslim, who maybe want to learn about Islam, um, and since the month of Ramadan is the most important month to kind of reflect upon the Quran and read the Quran, it is the month in which the Quran was revealed to our Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I read a surah from the Quran last night, and I just absolutely love this surah. I think it really speaks volumes for people who maybe don't know much about Islam, um, or maybe converts to Islam. Um, it's just a really nice chapter. Um, and chapters in the Quran are called surahs, um, just like verses are called ayat. Um, so if you ever hear me say those two words. So I thought, you know, maybe I'm just going to sit down and I'm just going to read a little bit of Quran. Um, I probably won't, I, I don't think I'll be able to read the whole thing. It's really not that long. Um, but yeah, I don't have that much time left to spend on the video. So let's just go ahead and let's just read. Now, obviously, I'm going to be reading the English translation. I am reading the interpretation of the meaning of the Noble Quran in the English language by um, Dr. Muhammad Muhsin Khan, this one here. And um, so we are going to be going over briefly, not all of it, obviously, um, Surah 31, which is Surah Luqman. Okay, so before we 
read the Quran, we always say Bismillah Rahmani Rahim, and this just translates to in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most beneficent, or the most beneficent, the most merciful, or the most gracious, the most merciful. Ah, sorry. <laughs> So anyways, so we always say that it's just kind of like we are reading for the pleasure of Allah to connect with our creator. And so we're having intention in what we are doing. We're not just going and just reading like we would a normal book. We want to set our intentions to read Quran. So it starts off with Alif Lam Mim. Now I want to say that one of the good um, things about this translation in particular is that there are a lot of little side notes, little brackets next to the ayat, next to the verses that the, uh, the interpreter kind of felt was necessary to help to explain certain things. So I will be reading those. So I don't want to confuse anybody in saying that these words are in the Quran. But I do think just for translation purposes, for audience purposes, I do think these little brackets are good to read. Um, so just keep that in mind um, when you hear me reading. So Alif Lam Mim, one of the brackets. These letters are one of the miracles of the Quran and none but Allah alone knows their meanings. So that right there was a bracket. So I just feel like, you know, these kind of things, especially with me reading on this video, might be nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and read them because uh, honestly, to kind of skip over them might slow my reading down a little bit because I'll have to kind of like jump over it. Um, so let's go ahead and finish. <laughs> I guess. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim These are verses of the wise book, the Quran. A guide and a mercy for the muhsinun, muhsinun, which means the good doers. Sometimes this translator will put the Arabic word, maybe because he thinks that the, the English reader should be um, acquainted with that particular word. Um, so it means good doers. Those who perform as salah, which is the prayers, that's in brackets, and give zakat, obligatory charity. And they have faith in the hereafter with certainty. Such are on guidance from their Lord, and such are the successful. And of mankind is he who purchases idle talks, things like music and singing, to mislead men from the path of Allah without knowledge, and takes it, the path of Allah, or the verses of the Quran, by way of mockery, for such there will be a humiliating torment in the hellfire. And when our verses of the Quran are recited to such a one, he turns away in pride, as if he heard them not, as if there were deafness in his ear. So announce to him a painful torment. Verily, those who believe in Islamic monotheism and do righteous good deeds for them are gardens of delight paradise. To abide therein, it is a promise of Allah in truth, and he is the Almighty, the All-Wise. He has created the heavens without any pillars that you see, and has set on the earth firm mountains lest it should shake with you. And he has scattered therein moving, living creatures of all kinds. And we send down water, rain from the sky, and we cause plants of every goodly kind to grow therein. This is the creation of Allah. So show me that which those whom you worship besides him have created. Nay, the zalimun, polytheists, wrongdoers, and those who do not believe in the oneness of Allah are in plain error. And indeed we bestowed upon Luqman al-Hikmah, wisdom and religious understanding saying give thanks to allah and whoever give thanks he gives thanks for the good of his own self and whoever is unthankful then verily allah is all rich free of all needs worthy of all praise and remember when luke man said to his son when he was advising him oh my son join not in worship others with allah Verily, joining others in worship with Allah is a great zulm, wrong, indeed. And we have enjoined on men to be dutiful and good to his parents, 
His mother bore him in weakness and hardship upon weakness and hardship, and his weaning is in two years. Give thanks to me and to your parents. To me is the final destination. But if they both strive with you to make you join and worship with me, others that of which you have no knowledge, then obey them not, but behave with them in the world kindly and follow the path of him who turns to me in repentance and in obedience. Then to me will be your return, and I shall tell you what you used to do. O oh, my son, if it be anything equal to the weight of a grain of a mustard seed, and though it be in a rock, or in the heavens, or in the earth, Allah will bring it forth. Verily, Allah is subtle in bringing out that grain, well acquainted with its place. O oh, my son, Akim es Salah, perform prayers, enjoin on people El Maruf, Islamic monotheism, and at all that is good. And forbid people from Al Munkar, this belief in the oneness of Allah, polytheism of all kinds and all that is evil and bad, and bear with patience whatever befalls you. Verily, these are some of the important commandments ordered by Allah with no exemption. And turn not your face away from men with pride, nor walk in insolence through the earth. Verily, Allah likes not any arrogant boaster. And be moderate, or show no insolence in your walking, and lower your voice. Verily, the harshest of all voices is the braying of donkeys. The translator uses a different word. <laughs> See you not, O men, that Allah has subjected for you whatever is in the heavens and whatsoever is in the earth, and has completed and perfected his grace upon you, both apparent, i.e. Islamic monotheism and the lawful pleasures of this world, including health, good looks, and hidden, one's faith in a law of Islamic monotheism, knowledge, wisdom, guidance for doing righteous deeds, and also the pleasures and delights of the hereafter in paradise. Yet of mankind is he who disputes about a law without knowledge or guidance or a book given light. And when it is said to them, follow that which Allah has sent down, they say, nay, we shall follow that which we found our fathers following. Would they do so? even if shaitan invited them to the torment of the fire. And whosoever submits his face himself to Allah while he is a muhsin, a good doer, performs good deeds totally for Allah's sake without any show off or to gain praise or fame and does them in accordance with the sunnah of Allah's messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold. La ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And to Allah return all matters for decision. And whoever disbelieves, let not their disbelief grieve you. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to us is their return and we shall inform them what they have done. Verily Allah is the all-knower of what is in the breast of men. We let them enjoy for a little while, then in the end we shall oblige them to enter a great torment. And if you, O Muhammad, Ask them, who has created the heavens and the earth? They will certainly say, Allah. Say, all praise and thanks for Allah, but most of them know not. To Allah belongs whatsoever is in the heavens and the earth. Verily, Allah is al ghani the rich, free of all needs, the worthy of all praise. And if all the trees on the earth were pens and sea, were ink, were wherewith to write, with seven seas behind it to add to its su supply, yet the words of Allah would not be exhausted. Verily, Allah is the Almighty, the All-Wise, the creation of you all and the resurrection of you all are only as the creation and resurrection of a single person. Verily, Allah is all-hearer, all-seer. I'm going to have to stop now. I'm on verse 28. If you want to continue, continue on verse 29 all the way to 34 on Surah Luqman, chapter 31. Okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and Ramadan Mubarak. Bye.